All right, let's begin here uh, in Nigeria on the continent of Africa. As the month of May comes to a close, there's been a focus on Africa's digital divide, particularly with Children's Day that was celebrated uh, on Monday, May 27th. The digital divide also came up during South Africa's elections with the vote counting still ongoing. Income inequality, 45.5% youth unemployment in Africa's most industrious nation are the big issues. Continent-wide, how can we close the divide? We are very happy to have technology consultant Dr. Adironke Kudure, who joins us from Washington, D.C. Doctor, thank you so much for waking up so early <laughs> to talk to us on the, on the show. So, you know, considering the direction in which jobs are trending today, Doctor, how essential are digital skills for the youth? No, it's a pleasure to be here. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Um, it is it is almost like a it's it's essential for life. Um, you know, it's almost like breathing these days. Um, it is difficult to get anything done uh, without digital skills, and it's becoming more and more. Uh, so we really need to wake up um, from a Nigerian perspective. So it's an essential skill. Now, there, there, are some, there are some focus areas, right, when it comes to um, the, plugging the digital uh, divide. Now, when we talk about digital skills, are we just talking about the ability to operate a computer or a smartphone? How deep does it get? Sure. I think it's a wide gamut. Um, yes, like you said, it starts from, first of all, knowing what a computer is, knowing what a phone is, and knowing the power of those devices. But then it ranges all the way to being able to perform basic functions using those devices and to being able to build those devices. Uh, so you'll have people across the gamut, depending on you know, their needs in life or their responsibilities from a job perspective. Now, we're talking a lot about youth. It's been brought up during the uh, elections in South Africa. It was brought up during uh, Children's Day. You had a, a radio interview on that earlier in the week. How early does this process begin? I mean, we've seen coding camps set up for kids in, in kindergarten. Is that how early the digital skill acquisition uh, should begin? So I actually believe it should start a little earlier than what you see in the coding camps. Um, it really is very similar to literacy. It is the literacy of the 21st century. Um, and so it should really start as early as you begin to teach your children to read and to count. Um, because the more skills they acquire, the more it becomes second nature to them as children, the more effective and efficient they will be as they grow into their teenage and adult or youth years. Now, uh, uh, Doctor, we, I was in uh, Enugu State uh, earlier this week. Uh, the governor there is planning about 260 smart schools. They're using you know, the latest equipment, computers, and we asked them about the cost, right? Because when we look at some of the hurdles to narrowing this digital divide, there are a number of them from infrastructure, affordability, you know, digital literacy, and so on. So what about the cost of these materials and, you know, and acquiring them, you're talking about you know, teaching kids you know, earlier than kindergarten. They're, they're, you know, it is, it's like we're, we're in an emerging market in Nigeria here. Of course, you're in a developed market in DC, but can you speak to the, the cost and how to address that? Sure, definitely. So the good thing is that globally, the costs are coming down when you think about the cost for those specific devices. That being said, as we think about where we are in Nigeria and reaching the broad base of our children or our youth that need those digital skills, I think we need to be more intentional and more creative. Um, oftentimes we spend you know, millions and millions, even billions of Naira trying to equip um, single station locations, right? So we've got you know, situations where at least some of our leaders are planting you know, six coding stations across the country when we have over 20 million children out of school, right? Um, I think we need to think a little more creatively in terms of how we spend our dollar, how we spend our Naira. So for instance, instead of maybe spending so much money on one school to get 50 to 100 computers, maybe we buy one laptop for each school and then we're reaching more children at the same time. They may not all get to sit at the computer at the same time, but they all would have the access to understanding what it is, how it functions, touching the keyboard. So we can really, if we are thinking a little more strategic, we can really spend that, um, 
expand our resources or stretch our resources a little more. Another thing to think about is, do you always buy new computers versus old computers? Do you buy phones versus um, computers or you know desktops versus laptops? Those are the things that make a huge difference in the cost of our electronics. And I think if we're being a little more thoughtful and a little more strategic, the little money that we have will go much further um, in terms of uh, providing digital resources uh, to our youth. Um, there's also the concept of you know, equipping our states and local uh, libraries. Um, if we equip those spaces, then more people can come and use them temporarily as opposed to trying to give one device to one child. Well said. Now, I'm glad you've laid all of that out. Now, if those strategies I guess are not followed to the T. Do you see, in fact, even with the strategies you've put forward, uh, one of our headlines today is that Apple is planning to overhaul um, Siri with new you know, AI initiatives. Apple is working with OpenAI. They're going to reveal those at the Worldwide uh, Developers Conference in June. Um, I'm particularly excited for the iPhone 16, but that's a really expensive phone, doctor. So do you see a digital divide widening between those that can afford an iPhone 16 or those are, you know, a new MacBook or these other electronic devices that have these new, um, these new tools versus those that cannot? I actually don't. Um, and the reason why is a couple of things. Um, you, will always, you will always have new devices and you will always have the most expensive devices out there. Um, the more technology comes out, the more opportunities come even on the high end, from a high end perspective. But the way to look at it is this, the more technology we have in the market, the lower the cost um, of production, um, which is why if you look at it from a global perspective, um, we have, I believe it's be, be, for children between the ages of 15 and 24, we have about 70% um, of them that, are, that have digital skills, right? It's a little different in Nigeria, it's very different in Nigeria, but from a global perspective, because of the cost of technology coming down, at least at the mid-level, more people have access to it. Um, but the problem we, we face in Nigeria is um, obviously being able to provide access to more people um, at the lower echelon. And for those people at the lower echelon, it's also all not bad news because the more people like you and I are buying the high-end iPhones, the more we can take our old devices and pass it on to those that may not be able to afford more. We need to think about recycling and how we get those devices that are no longer trendy to those who would really appreciate them instead of trashing them. That, that actually, that's a very good point. And in fact, there are programs to, to swap those devices, the older models uh, for the new ones and so on. Um, kindergarten kids, um, We'll need tutors, you know, for guidance. Uh, but what do you make of self-help um, tutorials online on a YouTube for older kids? Do you think those have a, a role to play? They have an important role to play, and they are making ways today. Um, we, everyone, anyone that has never touched a technology device might need the basics. You know, here's how to turn it on. Here's, you know, don't pour water on it. Um, here's how to turn it off. Here's how to use your mouse. Everybody that hasn't touched it would need those basics. But once you have those basics and you understand the power of the internet, that's where you should spend your time. There's absolutely nothing that you cannot learn on the internet. I'll give you a good example. We have um, children's libraries. My foundation has children's libraries, about 100 of them across the country. Um, we, do, we decided that we were going to teach them how to play chess. Our teachers don't know how to play chess. But what we did is we equipped them with phones that can access YouTube and the children are learning how to play chess. They don't need an instructor. All they need is access to the internet and they are learning these skills and they're doing well. And this is just one use case, one example. As long as our children and our youth are able to get access to computers or phones, and the internet, the world is their horizon. There's so much they can learn. And we're excited about what's, you know, what's ahead for them with that. Now, uh, thanks for mentioning that. So, okay, the great stuff you're doing with your foundation and, and, and teaching the kids. As they get older, are the jobs for individuals with digital skills here in Africa or in Nigeria or overseas, uh, you know, and you know, is the advantage of digital skills being able to work remotely in your view? 
Sure. So that is one of the advantages of having digital skills. Um, and it's a huge advantage because it allows a lot of work, work life balance um, for many people. But in terms of where the, where the jobs are, the jobs are everywhere. They are both local and they're international. The good thing for us is that it opens doors for us to begin to work across global lines. So you no longer have to have a visa to the United States or the UK to be able to be employed there and make money there. Uh, so that's one of the advantages there. That being said, there's also tons of opportunity locally in Nigeria, whether it is working for many of our large banks, our large corporations, our governments, there's still a lot to do there from a digital perspective and the jobs do exist. Maybe not as much as the people that we have looking for the jobs, but the jobs do exist. That being said, we can also begin to look at things like opening more businesses. We need more entrepreneurs in the technology space, whether it's opening cyber cafes in remote areas, whether it's teaching people how to use computers. We just re really need to start thinking about how do we use the resources we are to stretch it to be able to do more of what we want to do. But the jobs are both local and global. All right, now, doctor, you're you're in Washington D.C., so I don't know if one can say you you jackpot, but what, what what do you make of that whole situation? You know, can that be turned? You just talked about you know opportunities in Nigeria, remote work. So is the jackpot thing? Is it you know how do you, how do you see that working out? How do you see that whole development there? Sure. So I think it's uh, it's two sided. I think there are advantages to it. Uh, so for instance, you 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 call me out on that. For me, it was educational. Um, and I really didn't have a choice. My parents said, you know, this is where you should go to school. And I, and I went like any normal Nigerian child. But what it did for me is it provided me an exposure and an education that I can now bring back to Nigeria to make things better for my brothers and sisters who are not as privileged as I was. And so it is a good thing to get the exposure, but I think we need to start thinking about how we bring our resources, our people back, bring the diaspora back to make huge impacts in areas where we have gaps locally. Dr. Adiro Kekujure, uh, technology consultant, uh, waking up so early to talk to us all the way from Washington, D.C. It's been a pleasure discussing uh, your technology with you and uh, narrowing the digital divide and youth employability based on digital skills. Thank you so much for your insights. Really appreciate it.